Welcome to the Wine Exchange Tasting Room. And, um, ah, you know, this is kind of a, this is a little bit of a special day. Um, you know, we, uh, we talk a lot about wines from different parts of the world. Um, and, you know, we, in Bordeaux being one of them. But there's a place in Bordeaux that we really haven't touched upon in great depth, and that is the Sauternes region of Bordeaux. And with me today, uh, one of the famous families in Bordeaux, the Cassasia family. I have Monsieur Olivier Cassasia here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, here in the tasting room. And uh, he is the owner of uh, Doisy Verdrine, which is uh, located in the Sauternes region. So uh, without further ado, um, again, welcome. So Sauternes, what is it? Gold wine. <laughs> okay. <Benzine. laughs> <laughs> so Saturn, it's a region in the southwest, southeast of Bordeaux, mm -hmm. a very small region. We produce sweet wine due to the way we pick the grapes. The wine of Sauterne I made are made with a blend of Semillon and Sauvignon, and we pick the grapes when they are contaminated by a small fungus which called botrytis and this fungus absorbs the water contained in the grapes and makes the concentration of all the substances which are contained. So our job is to pick the grapes, only the grapes which are contaminated and concentrated by the botrytis. So by hand picking and we pass several times in front of each vines to keep this kind of uh, grapes. And then we press the juice and we mature the juice in, um, in barrels. The fermentation takes place in barrels mm -hmm. for 20 days. The harvest lasts for between four and uh, six weeks uh, to, to, to leave the time to obtain the good concentration. So essentially, you're not picking the cluster when you go in the vineyard. You're no, picking the berries. Only the, the berries. And this, ber this uh, botrytis, which develops on the berries, is due to a special microclimate we have in the region of Barsac, Sauterne. Um, Barsac and Sauterne is located at the confluence of the Garonne River and the Siron. The Siron is a small confluent of mm -hmm. the Garonne mm -hmm. and which um, take his um, origin in the, in the land region and which uh, the water of the Siron is very cold okay. and when the Siron arrive in the region of Barsac and Sauterne and reach the Garonne it develops a lot of fog okay. and this fog allows to the botrytis to develop Okay, so basically the fog is the mist, yes. and the mist gets on the grape, and it allows this normal, this rot. Okay, exactly. so like for example, like you don't want that rot like in like in Pouillac because that's no. very bad. Okay, exactly. but you want this rot obviously in Sauterne because it you want that rot to kind of suck up all the, all the the extraction of the grape uh, to to get this really deep concentration of the fruit. So do you, do you naturally pick later because of this? Due to the, it's, it depends on the weather condition we have, because uh, some years, you know, um, we have um, uh, the, 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 the process starts January 20th of September, okay. and um, lasts till early, November. Which for Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc is late. I mean, essentially, if you were making a dry wine, you would you would naturally pick those grapes earlier? Of course. Okay. Before to, that the grapes are contaminated for, by the botrytis, because botrytis is good for Sauterne, but not for the other wine. Correct. So, like, what happens when, let's say, you know, you pass through, you got botrytis, but you you miss the pass, and then the botrytis continues. I mean, can you can this botrytis keep going on? Or, or yes, if if you leave the botrytis for too long time on the vines, 
from noble rods, which is a good botrytis, it becomes the grey rot, which is a bad botrytis, and which gives which gives to the wine the bad taste of uh, higher there and uh, some uh, no good taste. So essentially, I mean, like you know, we were talking earlier, and, and uh, you know, basically, one vine equals usually a bottle of wine, usually. So how many vines does it take to make a sauterne? Um, how many vines? Yeah, how many vines mm, usually? Yes, we need we need uh, at least six vines to produce one bottle. <laughs> so the yield are very low, as you can see. I mean, I'm not going into the sauterne business anytime soon, personally. <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy so, because it's 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 such a delicious wine. Whenever you, I taste it, I, I always keep asking myself, why am I not drinking more sauterne? Why aren't you drinking more sauterne? We should all be drinking sauterne. But here, here's actually the one interesting thing about sauterne. Most people think it should be drunk at the end of a meal. But this is not the case. No. It's better to be drunk as, a, as an aperitif because it's opened the appetite. You know, the, 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 this sweet taste is very pleasant. And what is important and what I look for at uh, Toisy Vedrine is to to have a balanced wine. That's very important because there is, as the, the, I said before, the botrytis concentrates all the absorb the water and concentrates all the substance contained in the food and mm -hmm. also the acidity. And that's important to have a high acidity to keep the freshness and which makes the, the taste digest. It's easy to drink. Uh, and when you are uh, you open the bottle before the meal, you drink one or two glasses, and you ask for one or that. So. <laughs> kind of like now. <laughs> it's the beginning of the day, and it tastes really good. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny, because um, I have actually been lucky enough to do, like, Sautern court meals, with Sautern going through the whole course of the meal, and, and it's amazing. It really is. And, like, with Asian food... It's, it's yeah. incredible. I mean, especially when you mix the spice with the acidity and the freshness of Sauterne. It, it's, it's, it, it is absolutely a, just a beautiful match. Yes, a good wedding. With the, there is a lot of uh, food which uh, could be matched with the, the, the Sauterne wine. And uh, for the aperitif, I recommend to drink better the young vintage. Yeah, yeah, because um, you know it's on the fruit and the freshness and uh, everything is very um, uh, pleasant as young. And after ten years, you can bring it with the cheese and the end of the meal and alone, smoking mm -hmm. a cigar. Or the, it's matching very well. That sounds kind of good. We have the eleven and we have the one, and the one it, it's like it's more that that that. Um, marmalade and kind of that more that honey marmalade whereas like you know like Olivia said the 11 is that really fresh and light and great acidity it just it kind of livens the palate up um, but in addition to Sauterne, Sauterne is actually the region is making a lot of really quality dry whites as well we were talking about that earlier yes. um, and you as well with the with the Danny de Bourdieu who's a you know the famous white wine enologist who is consulting uh, at Doisy Verdrine we, we are starting to see more dry whites in, in the marketplace from Sauterne. Um, we were talking about this. You know, I'm kind of at the camp that I think that, that it should, I, I, I know that it could be confusing. We're going to maybe have a vote with the public to see what they think. Should Sauterne have its own appellation for the dry whites, or should it just be called Bordeaux, generic Bordeaux? What do you think? I think, uh, <laughs> yes, as you say, the region is able to produce great quality dry white wine, but I think it's a mistake to call them Sauterne dry, because Sauterne, we always know that it's sweet. The ADN of the Sauterne is the liqueur, as the bubbles are the ADN of the champagne. Right. If you take off the bubbles of champagne, it's not anymore champagne. If you take off the liquor, it's not sauterne. So, sauterne is sweet. 
and be going. Well, there you have it. So Sauternes is sweet, not dry, but I think it should be dry too. But, you know, you know that this is the beauty of this business. You know, everybody has their, you know, opinion, what they think is right and wrong and all that stuff. But I actually, I mean, again, it, it's more the quality of the, of the whites that come, the dry whites that come from Sauterne because they make just the, these, these wines are just so unique and so great um, that I do see your point as well. But uh, anyway, again, no right, no wrong. But one thing is for sure, the quality is in the glass. Olivier, thank you. Thank you. Glass. <laughs> thank you very much for being in the room. And, uh, and uh, buy some soccer.